What kind of aliens are in Star Citizen? Can you play as them? Are they even significant? The Gatak Siulin is the latest ship available in Star Citizen, and it's from an alien manufacturer. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to that manufacturer and the other alien factions in Star Citizen and explain why they'll matter to you as a player in the future. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. The Gatak Siulin is a new type of ship, in more ways than one. Yes, this is the first vertical takeoff and land ship in the game, the first three-deck starter ship, and the first ship from Xion manufacturer Gatak. But it's also one of the most unnecessary ships we could get. And that's a good thing. With six SCU of storage, this thing doesn't necessarily prove itself as a small hauler when you compare it to something like the Nomad with 24 SCU. And with three size guns and 24 size two missiles, it carries quite a bit of power for the distinction, but as a 20 meter flying cube, it may not be your best choice for a small fighter compared to something like the Gladius. And even as a general purpose ship, the Siulin has competition in the Avenger Titan with higher cargo, more protection for said cargo, a smaller size, and slightly better guns. But numbers aren't everything. And a general purpose ship is the most important for Star Citizen especially at this size. The Siulin finds itself in the middle of a lot of ships with different roles, and it both emphasizes their strengths, like the carrying capacity of the Nomad and the simplicity of the Cutter, or the combat readiness of the Gladius, and it pretty cleanly defines itself as the bar for the premium single-seat experience in the most generic sense. Hospitality, defense, utility. Nothing of extra function, including space. It's a bit cramped. It's a premium starter ship that specializes in unique design and experience, while others might choose mining, salvage, or even passenger transport. That choice of picking such a general ship to upgrade through in your progression is key to the variety a game like Star Citizen is looking for, and equally as much the choice to completely skip a ship like this in your progression because it's simply not necessary, it's just a choice. Because when you break it down, we need more reasons than just speed, utility, and DPS to differentiate each person's ship selection. And alien design is a huge checkbox to hit for many people. This ship continues a quickly increasing presence of the alien lore of Star Citizen entering the game. And as development continues along with this trend, players will be able to specialize more in that part of the universe. If you're a supporter, you can already watch one of my exclusive videos which goes over alien languages and other parts of the game that are supporting this. But for now, let's look at the rest of the alien ships in Star Citizen so far and the alien species that make them. Starting with the creator of the Gatak Siulin, the Xion. The Xion are a lizard-like people that are on average shorter than humans. Interestingly, while they are a spacefaring race advanced far more than our own, they were not originally their own planet's apex predator, and thus rely more on foods that come from scavenging, prepared by decay and fermentation, rather than cooking and hunting. This also has an effect on their psychology. So does probably living so long. The species generally lives hundreds of years and has been spacefaring since at least 19,000 BC. So they've been around. For much of the time we've known them, tensions have been pretty high. While no open war was declared, we've had many armed operations against them and vice versa during Cold War times, only to recently declare stronger understandings of cooperation which clearly are growing quickly with these new ships. So I'm sure there is nothing to worry about and we won't have any opportunities to work for or against that alliance in the future missions, right? It's not like the gangs like Xenothread or friendly factions like Citizens of Pyro who spray paint don't buy alien in Microtech would have any missions against the Xion. So back to ships. The other ship from Gatak is the Raylan, introduced a couple years ago as a mid-sized hauler, but this one's still not in game. We don't know much about it other than its use of hover tech, special shaped cargo containers, and monolithic design. It was our only look at Gatak design until the surprise reveal of the Siulin. It is planned to begin production shortly after the completion of our next ship, the Santok Yai. This ship is the second from Aopoa, another manufacturer from the Xion race. The Santok is a medium fighter akin to a saber or a hornet, and it uses Xion's signature omnidirectional thrusters to achieve maneuverability most others can't match. It also features a much more organic design than one might expect from a spaceship. Its smaller brother, the Kartual, is also an omnidirectional, organic, weird-looking beast of a ship, but it is the light fighter variant going up against the Gladius or the Arrow. 
This ship is already in the game and can be experienced by anybody. From the same company is the Nox, a hover bike available in game to players as well. All Xion ships in lore are made by the aliens themselves, sometimes as a strictly human variant to their own ships or with conjoined design and shared facilities. This is true amongst many alien-made ships and means sometimes you'll run into weird toilets or lofty ceilings for seemingly no reason. Outside of the Xion, you also have the Banu, a friendly merchant class of beings with pretty good relations to humans. They were the first alien species humanity ever encountered and have always maintained good relations since. We see this replicated throughout lore with Banu and humans teaming up together in crews and Banu advertising heavily to humans. They have no standing military and generally no bad relations with anyone, as trade and commerce overcomes almost everything with them. As you can imagine, we also quite like their ships. In fact, the Banu Merchantman is probably one of the most desired ships in all of Star Citizen. After a couple redesigns and many years of waiting, the ship is still a ways from being in game after the developer creating the ship parted ways. But besides design, this ship will also require an entire working shop system, as it acts like a 230 meter plus traveling bazaar where players and NPCs alike can dock, come aboard, and buy or sell rare items. This is a common trope in sci-fi, whether through data or cargo. The idea of hosting a moving storefront is a fantasy of many. The ship aims to offer it and will likely be heavily featured in many set pieces throughout the game, but you'll still have to wait some time to experience this, cause the gameplay. Its designated escort fighter, the Defender, however, is already available. It is actually a great choice for two players who want to play together as it offers seats and facilities for two in a small fighter format. Then there is Asperia. This is the one manufacturer here that actually belongs to humans. Started by two brothers dedicated to the preservation of older ships and their construction methods, Esperia focuses on alien ships from the human perspective. They are built on a one-to-one -one scale to honor the original craftsmanship and feature no major differences other than seating and facilities that accommodate humans. The company also funds a lot of research grants and scholastic scholarships, so they get some points there. And from the company we have the Asperia Prowler and the Talon, both recreations of ships from the Tavarin. The story surrounding the Tavarin is a pretty sad one. This is the alien race that we ended up getting into formal war with, and at a time when humanity was really struggling with its expansion into space, the Tavarin acted as a good common enemy. We first encountered them in 2541, and within 10 years, after the less advanced species attacked humans for resources, the empire had been broken, humans were terraforming and colonizing their systems, and most of Aran were absorbed into the human empire. 150 years later, a new warlord attempted to take back their homeworld, but was again defeated by the humans, cementing the Messer reign, God save us all, and ending all major armed conflict between humans and Tavarin. While there are still Tavarin out in communities, most act as part of the UEE and even some work in the government. If you want to learn more about all this lore, I would check out the Astro Historian's YouTube channel. He's got a great series on the history of Star Citizen, but there's a lot of depth going into the history of humans and their relationships with these aliens, so I'll be sure to follow up on this video in the future as well. But now that Prowler and Talon have some different context, huh? Both have very bird-like features and structure, and take some very sleek design cues, but they are niche ships meant for troop deployment in the case of the Prowler, and a light fighter for the Talon. Finally from Asperia, we have faithful recreations of Vanduul ships. The Vanduul are kinda jerks. Since 2681, they've repeatedly attacked humans while refusing all communications. Now the species itself is actually a collection of nomad clans with different loyalties, beliefs, and technological prowess. But at the end of the day, they are all driven by increasing the power of their plan and species. In 2945, about 260 years after first contact, and about eight years ago in lore, the Vanduul opened the first hot war on humanity in centuries, which is actually the event that kicks off Squadron 42. Since then, the constant bombardment and annexation of human systems has set up the economic strain, criminal peak, and overall instability that is the backstory for Star Citizen. So they are a pretty big deal in this universe, and also uniquely annoying. Luckily, Asperia makes their ships for us. The light fighter blade is currently in its second iteration of design. The heavier asymmetric scythe is currently still on its first, which you can clearly tell. 
The symmetric version of that ship, the Glaive, is a very capable fighter that is also still on its first rendition as well. Each of these ships already has their redesign complete and ready for the game, but they will not be updated in Star Citizen until their official unveiling in Squadron 42. These designs are meant to be more in line with the Vanduul lore. It is a species that captures and repurposes others' technologies, generally melting it down and melding it together into technological mulch. There are also a number of other ships in the Vanduul fleet that we don't know much about and will likely learn more about in Squadron 42. Each of these alien species will have a part to play in Star Citizen. A few of them we will someday be able to play as. This has been confirmed as a reason for their bivetal constructions. And even one more race is still out there somewhere, generally held as a mystery to humans on the other side of Xion space. While they aren't in the game right now like we would want them, all of these aliens are far from just lore stand-ins. We will receive missions, dialogue, and story from these aliens. We'll fight them, hunt them, and use them for information. Their ships, architecture, and technologies will play a part in our everyday gameplay, and many will learn their languages to get a hand up in the game when it counts. Like with many things in Star Citizen, the stage is still being set for aliens. Through various puzzles being released, ships being made, factions being built, and eventually the system development that will bring us there. With the Vega and Odin systems both being made for Squadron 42 likely featuring some Vanduul background, by the time those systems make it into the game, we will have to start experiencing them in the PU. So if you are interested in a strictly human science fiction, I'm sorry to give you the bad news. But if you're interested in seeing how an alien species can intertwine through politics, economics, combat, and mercantilism with a humanity struggling at war and fighting to recover, you're likely going to experience some amazing story and nuance in the fiction Star Citizen is building. I've barely touched on the lore of these species or their ships in this video, but I aim to bring you a lot more information like this in the future. We have a long way to go, but I'll be sure to keep the weekly videos and streams coming. And if you want to support the channel, my Patreon and YouTube members have been enjoying our referral randomizer program. Supporters of a certain tier will have their code added to my randomizer below, earning my supporters and newcomers who sign up in-game bonuses rather than using my referral code. Besides that, you can find three different podcasts, long-form analytical content, and casual news drops over on Space Tomato 2 as well. It's my second channel. And if you've made it this far, you should take the secret code now on screen and enter it into my giveaway for one of these weird new alien ships. I'll be giving one away in the coming weeks with a few more additional secret codes on the way to get you more entries coming in my videos and streams. So keep an eye out. I hope you learned something new in this video. I'll catch you in the next.